Greetings, greetings. Today I wanted to share with you seven things that you can do when you are feeling low. We all have those days where we feel out of sorts. And when we feel out of sorts, it's so important to hop on it and to intervention, do some sort of intervention so that we can shift out of that low vibration. You with Tanisha Ali of Butterfly Transformations. And if this seems like something that you could benefit from, stay tuned and listen to the seven things that you can do to shift out of a space of feeling low and get back to feeling more like yourself. Welcome back. The first thing I want to say to preface this topic is if you're watching this video, then you are somebody who is trying to work on their chronic vibration, which is where you fall at most of the time when you're not being stimulated by external events. You didn't win the lottery, but you're still feeling this way. You win the lottery, two weeks later, you're still feeling this way. That's your default vibration. So when you're working on that, it's important to realize that to shift into a higher vibratory frequency, it does take a little bit of time. So be easy on yourself. And I say that to say our body, our emotional state, our mental state is stuck in a patterning of sorts that we've been grooming since we were wee small. So just because you start to think different consciously doesn't mean the rest of you is coming along for the ride without a fight. So I want you to keep that in mind. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that regardless of what we are experiencing at any given time in our material reality, we have to be able to have a thought that is higher or more evolved than the situation, circumstances, or the reality that we may find ourselves in. So you wake up in the morning and you're not feeling so great. When I say you need to be able to have an emotion or create a reality that's higher than how you're feeling in that given moment, what that is saying is that you can't allow an emotion or a feeling to drive what you know to be true. The truth is you awaken another day to participate in life, right? That's really the reality. So there's really nothing wrong because you awaken that day at the most basic level, along with a million other things, we have to accept that. So what does this mean? This means that the emotions uh, create the energetic fabric of our experience. And when we give an emotion an interpretation, a mental construct, we put a mental construct to it and we define it, then we have feelings, right? So you wake up one morning, you start searching, you don't know what's going on. You, you, you do a survey of your mind and you're like, oh, well, maybe this has to do with the argument I had with the boss at work or the, the disagreement I had with my mom or this multitude of things that I have to do that is causing me to feel overwhelmed. In that minute that you define it and you bring those feelings to life, you create a story and then you have an, then you have an experiential reality. You start to experience whatever it is that you just focused your mind on and made truth, right? This is where the intervention has to come in because wherever you focus your mind at in that moment, that's what's going to take shape in your world and that's what's going to become real. It doesn't matter what might actually really be the issue or the fact that there may not be an issue at all. It's just that you have an entire wholeness. You have a physical body, an emotional body, a mental body, a spiritual body. You are an energetic vastness that requires nurturing on all levels. And one of those areas could just be out of alignment. But once you create the story, you've already gone in, right? So the first thing you have to do, first and foremost, when you're feeling low, is to see it as feedback. See how you are feeling as feedback of any number of things, where you are on the vibrational continuum. Uh, 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 seeing it as feedback in terms of it signal, signaling you that there's something you need to look into deeper into your life to figure out what's going on. So you're actually listening and you're going within and you're saying to yourself, why am I feeling this way? Do I have a valid reason 
for actually feeling this way. If you don't have a valid reason for feeling that way, then there's some things you need to do so that you can snap out of that feeling. If you have a valid reason for feeling that way, then you need to process that. Maybe you do need to rest. Maybe you do need to take the day off. Maybe you need to process it, bring whatever emotions are beneath the surface, surface up and deal with them. The reality is that I'm, I'm, I'm discussing these, these, these strategies um, for people who are not in a constant chronic lull of depression. I'm talking about an every now and then when you have a few days or a day or so where you feel out of sync, okay? So you got to see it as feedback. Number two, this is really, really important. You, it, usually it means you need to let something go. There's always something beneath the surface or there's often something beneath the surface that is causing you some degree of discomfort and keeping you in this place. And it's usually something that you feel, something that you have a limiting belief about, something that you feel you can't do anything about it right now without it creating some hardship. And so you have to stay with it or sit with it or experience it as it is in your life. So it means it's time for you to let something go. And when I say let something go, I mean like drop it like it's hot, baby. I mean, let it go. Give yourself, allow yourself the opportunity to release what is holding you down. It could be a long list of 20 or 30 things that's not making you feel good. If you could write those things down on a list, every single thing that causes you to feel heavy and then go down that list and knock off 15 things just by simply looking at them and seeing that they're not aligned with who you are or where you're going, <laughs> your direction of travel, and you could scratch them off that list, you would feel even lighter in just that moment. The third thing, when the emotion is not feeling very good and you're not feeling emotionally healthy and centered and mentally you're feeling off, you got to let your body pick up the slack and help to infuse energy. So you got to get moving. The third thing that you can do that in my experience has helped me is to get moving. Movement doesn't have to mean exercising. Exercising for a lot of people is not something that they enjoy. Movement means stretching. It could mean Tai Chi. Okay. It could mean a little yoga. It could mean going outside and checking your mailbox and coming back inside the house. You need to get moving. It could mean putting on your favorite song and dancing. Some type of movement you have to do. Number four, I already sort of mentioned, but it's giving yourself permission to just wallow. Sometimes the body is tired. Sometimes the body is burnt out because we are expecting too much and we're not getting adequate rest. Our minds are constantly processing. We're constantly being inundated with media, with all of these added responsibilities that are not necessary and urgent to the quality of life that we really need living in this day and time. So sometimes you just need to rest and you need to just cocoon and you need to just, you know, create that safe, that safe haven, that safe place for yourself, that womb space for yourself for a day. So just do that. Um, the fifth thing that you can do or that you should do is to eat a healthy meal. Okay. Fix yourself something or go out and pick up something or deliver something that not only has multiple food groups, but also provides a very colorful array of nutrition on your plate. Eat something healthy. We diminish the impact that our diets have on our overall wellness. We eat a lot of starch and carbs. We don't get in enough vegetables. We don't always get in enough fruits. Some of our diets may have too much fruits. We don't have enough vegetables, but you need something healthy, something that does not have processed food in it, something that is balancing. A lot of times when you're feeling low, you actually need some protein. So that's uh, number five, eat a nutritious meal, all right? Um, number six is to get some fresh air, go outside. The earth has a tremendous electromagnetic field that pulls the negative and lower vibrations out of us and allows us to actually absorb, as we are part of the cosmos, absorb higher, absorb higher uh, energy vibration. So utilize 
the earth, Mother Earth, go outside, take your shoes off, um, take some deep breaths of fresh air, look at the trees, just take a few minutes to get close to nature so that you can gain some perspective. Nature is very magical. Nature is very healing. Nature helps to shift us into a higher um, frequency. So use nature. Don't minimize the wealth of healing that is right at your fingertips, right outside the door. The seventh thing that you can do when you are feeling low, because you have a gap in between when you awaken on a day where you're not feeling 100% and you decide to tell yourself that story or to define what it is you feel and then you decide to live in that space and inhabit that space and then it takes on a life of its own, right? You have some gap time in between that time and during that time, it's important that you engage something that will help you get into a higher momentum than the one that you find yourself in. So oftentimes it can be as simple as listening to a guided meditation. It may be as simple as picking up a book, uh, reading something in your iPad from someone who you respect. It could be as simple as going on to YouTube and watching a motivational video. Um, what has to happen is you have to quickly heighten your frequency and drive yourself up before the rest of you comes down this way. So you have to come in quickly and do something that is going to bring you up. For some people, it may be hopping into something that they've avoided doing, taking a small step. For other people, it may be doing some journaling. For even other people, it may be deciding that they're going to do something that they never had time to do today that makes them feel good. For other people, it's it's a hobby, something that they just like to do, like cooking or beading or scrapbooking or something like that. The point is, in that moment, you have a very short window to hop on whatever it is and to do something with it and take it in a different direction so that it does not manifest as stagnate stagnation or uh, stuck energy in your life for that particular day. So these are the seven things that have helped me in my journey, things that I still do now when I need to, and it allows you to rise to the occasion and to have thoughts and behaviors that are of a higher frequency than what you may be feeling. We do not have to be a victim of our experiences or our emotions. We have to realize that we are creating them and we are a part of that process as it's evolving, whether we're doing it consciously or unconsciously. You with Tanisha Ali of Butterfly Transformations, helping you to get clear, up-level your mindset, heal, heal and clear energetic and emotional blocks and manifest the glory of God that is you. Have a beautiful and productive day.